Hello, this is Curtis from the Sprout Sharing Show, and you're watching a podcast where nostalgia comes alive. It's Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show. Roll it! Thank you. Thank you very much. Welcome to Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show, where nostalgia comes alive. Join Jake and his friends on a journey through pop culture of the past, where they interview professionals in the worlds of acting, directing, writing, puppeteering, and so much more. Who will they be chatting with today? Find out in this Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show episode. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this episode of Jake's Nostalgia Show. The nostalgia comes alive. How are you with us? Thank you for joining me. As always, from the host of Jake's Happy Ball. Good me today. I'm sorry about that. Hey, how are you doing? We're doing good. We're doing good. And hello, everybody. Not not sure if you caught that because his audio was muffled, but welcome. <laughs> welcome, everyone. Yes. How are you, Jake? I'm doing great, Matt. Thank you for asking. That Good. is wonderful. And who do we have for today? Well, today's guest we have for today, he's a puppeteer and an actor. A lot of you may know him in the Sprout franchise for being one of the puppeteers of Chica for Sprout and also perform Curse E. Owl on a Sprout Block, a Sprout Showing Show, and a lot more that will touch base more throughout his career later on. Please welcome Mr. Brandon Gowell. How about you here, Brandon? Welcome. Hey, How are you? Here. Thanks. <laughs> Good to have you here. Our pleasure to have you here. So now, um, to kick things off, uh, we know who you are, but for those who haven't, uh, could you tell our audience a bit about yourself and what you do? Sure. Yeah. Um, I'm um, I'm an actor. I'm a puppeteer. I'm also um, sometimes a prop builder or director. I mostly work in theater, um, and I'm based in Philadelphia, and I've been here um, for my all my my whole adult life, really. Um, yeah, nice. I do a little bit of everything. I'm kind of a, a jack of all trades, if you will. Nice. Very nice. So, what was your childhood like, and how did you grow up? Um, you know, in the usual way, I suppose. Um, I grew up in North Jersey with a lovely family there. Um, I have one younger brother. He's almost my. He's just two years younger than I am. Um, I also have a couple of stepsisters, and um. Yeah, uh, yeah, just in a suburb outside of New York City is where I grew up and it's where a lot of my family was based. Um, and then I came here to Philly to uh, go to college at the University of the Arts to study acting. Hmm. And so that's how I came to Philly hmm. and started my career in the theater. And um, that eventually led to puppetry in, in the theater, which then led to puppetry on TV and, and so far, so on and so forth. Now, so since we kind of talked about like how you got a career in puppetry and acting, like were those? Did you always want to be an actor or puppeteer? Um, I wanted to be an actor for a while. Um, I did a uh, in in one of my in my like my reading class in school in like sixth or seventh grade. One of the stories in the book was written as a play, so mm -hmm. the teacher assigned us all roles and we got to do the thing in front of another class and that was my like my first real experience acting and I was like oh I really like this this is really fun I also it was like a um uh uh what do you call it a Sherlock Holmes mystery and I was the villain which was just really fun to do so that's I think probably helped me enjoy it a lot um and so that was maybe sixth or seventh grade and then after that I started wanting to be an actor more and more um and then I did all the plays in high school that I could, and then eventually decided to go to go to college for this. Although at first I thought I wasn't sure if I was going to go for visual art or for uh, theater because I was also like a big drawer, um, uh, visual artist as well. So hmm. I was nice. like, hmm. choosing between the two. And I think I was a better actor than I was a, uh, an artist. So I was like, oh, maybe I should go with the thing I'm better at. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. There you go. So do you remember your first professional jobs as a puppeteer and actor? Oh, um, I don't know if I remember the first job. Maybe, maybe, maybe I do. Um, I think I was, I was, I was hired by uh, a theater company here in Philly. It was called Mum Puppet Theater, run by a guy named Robert Smythe. I don't know if you ever come across him. 
He doesn't do much anymore, but he used to do a lot of stuff at the O'Neill. Um, anyway, he had this uh, brick and mortar theater company here that just did puppetry. Um, and someone had recommended me to them to say like, oh, you are you should go audition for them. So I did. And I think it was like a little touring show where I got to play a, a lion hmm. puppet. Um, and I auditioned with this little lion puppet. And I, I, I did a few things with the lion puppet that Robert had never seen before. And he's like, oh, no one ever tried doing that with the, with the hair, like picking up the hair and making the eyes look around. Um, so I felt really proud of myself. I was like, oh, yay. Um, I did something new. And uh, I think that was really my first, my first gig. And that was maybe in those early 2000s. So like 2002 or three or something like that huh. back then. And then I did a few more shows with them. And then I eventually worked for this other company called Enchantment Theater Company. Uh, which is also based here in Philly, and they do children's, specifically children's shows and a lot of touring shows. So they tour like the tour around the U.S. Nice. Uh, I did, I, those were like my first two like big kind of. Oh, I'm 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 acting as a puppeteer now. Like no, here we go, um, and I just really I really enjoyed it and fell in love with it. I um, I think I very I very early on learned that I liked kind of the weird parts of acting. Like I didn't, I, I've done some straight acting. I've been in Shakespeare plays and things like that, but I, I learned that I liked mask work and commedia dell'arte and puppetry and um, kind of like the fringe of, of acting or like things that are a little stranger. So um, I started to do more and more of those things. And nice. less, of, less of the kind of traditional script in hand kind of play thing. Hmm. Awesome. So now, um, for years, you got to puppeteer on a number of projects for the Sprout Network, the first being one of the puppeteers of Chica mm -hmm. on the Sunny Sub show. How do you kind of begin, just began working for Sprout? Actually, the first thing I did was a sharing show. Oh, wow. Um, I got that job first. They, um, they had some auditions here in Philly. I forget how I learned about them. I think it was just through a, like a casting notice. Um, and I, I went in there and auditioned for Patty and for Curtis. For some reason, they already had Ricky set. Uh, they, didn't, they weren't auditioning for the rabbit, but they were auditioning for the other two. Um, and uh, I, I remember, um, I did something with Curtis. They asked me something about like my favorite food, and I was like, "Oh, it's a um, it's a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, of course, but uh, cut diagonal." And I don't know why, but I really like they really liked the idea that I had like a specific version of peanut butter and jelly. That's my memory of it, anyway. Um, so I auditioned. I auditioned for that, and that was with uh, Ali Eisner was there in the audition, and a few other people. Ali, oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, she was the writer of that show, I believe, uh, and sometimes directed it too, I think. But anyway, so I got that job first. And I, so that's when I, I first got introduced to the whole thing. And I, I came in, I, I got to meet Kelly and Forrest and Kevin because they, uh, they were working on it and, and they, were already, they were already working there at Sprout. So this, I was like the new guy. Wow. Uh, and, uh, yeah. And uh, and that was a that was an awesome experience. We loved shooting that show. That was so much fun. Uh, and we only shot like a like two seasons of it, I think, or like two and a half or something. We didn't do very much of it, but um, but that was how I got started was doing that. And then um, I don't know that that didn't shoot for very long. And then they started talking to me about doing another show. So there was this like. Um, they were, they were going, there was like a secret project to create a new network that was going to be for slightly older kids. So like Sprout was for preschoolers and then they wanted to do the, uh, the second, the second set up there, like, like the next age bracket up, they were going to create a new network, but they couldn't tell a lot of people about it. They were all hush hush and they wanted to do another more live morning show. And they wanted, then they were talking to me about puppeteering for this live morning show. And I was like, oh, whoa, this is going to be crazy. I get to like do my own thing on a whole new network and stuff. But of course, as history has shown, that never showed up. So um, for whatever reason, that project didn't ever end up getting off the ground. And I thought, oh, man, oh, oh, well, there goes my chance. And then like a couple of weeks later, they were like, 
somebody called me. I think maybe Kelly. I think maybe Kelly called me and was like, yo, they're looking for a new puppeteer for Chica because Forrest is going to move up to be a producer. You should come in and audition. I think it was Kelly gave me the heads up on that. Um, and so then I was like, okay, sure. I'll come in and check and, and audition for that. And then I got that. And so I, that's how I got to be Chica was because I kind of already got to be Curtis a little bit. Nice. So now getting on to uh, the Sunny Setup show, what was it like working with the other hosts and the other puppeteers? Oh, that's interesting. Well, we didn't really work with the other puppeteers all that much. Um, you know, we were only one at a time usually. Um, so uh, we did occasionally. Occasionally we would do something where we needed an extra puppeteer. And that was really cool because we always knew there was somebody else in the room. You know, like there was somebody nearby who could always do it. Um, I think the other guys explained that we were also associate producers. We were also APs on the show. So the puppeteers were also... Right. One, there was one week out of three where we were in the control room doing the countdowns in their ears with the headset on and everything. So, uh, so we were literally like in the room. And if they needed another puppeteer, we could always be like, yeah, Ed, can you come in and do this thing real quick? You know, someone else could do the countdown for one link or something. Um, or we could always just go upstairs and ask one of the other puppeteers to come down. Uh, right. That was always great. It was always a lot of fun to bring on the other people because we didn't get to work with them very often. So it was a lot of fun. Um, when I was, I was there mostly with Jen and Ed were the other puppeteers who were there like the longest amount of time when I was there too. Um, and Forrest too, Forrest was there. He was a producer, but he of course would like come back and puppeteer all the time. Um, and then as far as the hosts go, man, um, so many hosts there are to talk about. Um, uh, I, when I started there, it was like, Kevin and Sean and Kelly were, were doing it. They were like the original ones, kind of kicking it all off. So I got to like work with them. Yeah. Um, and then, gosh, yeah. And then like, and then Liz came in. Do you get, and I don't know if, I don't yeah. know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Liz, like, cause she wasn't there for very long. But Liz was an actor from Philly. Like I already knew her from doing plays and stuff in, in oh, Philly. Oh, wow. So I was really excited when I saw her show up for the audition. And I was like, I think I got to help them uh, help her audition. You know, like they came in and needed to audition with a chica. So I think I was the chica for her. And I got to like kind of give her the inside scoop. Be like, yo, this is how this is how things work. Oh, uh, yeah. And that was really fun. Um, and then. Yeah. Oh, and then, well, I think before that was Denisha because Denisha had replaced Kevin. Yeah, Denisha. Yeah. yeah. Uh huh. Um, and then, Ke and then Liz came in when we went to seven days a week. So we only, we used to only be five days a week. Right. And, and then you started doing like right. weekends and stuff. And we yeah. Mm -hmm. We needed a fourth host and that's when Liz came in. That's right. And then Liz left and Carly came in and that was really exciting. Because love Carly. Love Carly. Love Carly. Carly so much. <laughs> yeah. How can you not love Carly? Um, she's such a ball of energy and, and. She and I have like very similar theater training experience. Like she has a lot of uh, similar like physical theater and clown training. And we knew some of the same people. And that was really nice to be able to have the same, like a similar vocabulary with her about that stuff. Um, but I mean, Sean, uh, Sean and Kelly too. I mean, I, they're all, they all come from an acting experience, but Sean and Kelly came out of like, um, comedy improv and they worked together in uh, comedy sports here in philly oh wow um, before that and i actually i did a play with sean but like years before sprout he and i were in a play together um oh wow wow it was, it was called bomb and gilead uh and it was part of the fringe festival here in philly and it was like and so when i came back to when i when i when we came back and met each other and sprout it was like oh that guy i remember that guy <laughs> it was a big cast. We didn't do a lot of stuff together in the show, but we were in the show together. <laughs> nice. Yeah. So of course, and of course, I'm Sean is now doing like, like do, now doing like painting and all those things. Yeah, so that's he's an pretty cool. incredible painter. He is oh awesome. yeah. Like, yes. Did you ever see that any of the links where he painted something live on the show? Because he did that a couple times where he would like yeah or something. I think so. so. And it was like 
incredible. He would do, he would make a full, beautiful painting in like in three minutes. And we're like, I, I don't understand. I don't understand what you're doing. <laughs> Um, he and I worked together a lot at Sprout. There was this period where usually we rotated mm -hmm. um, every like three months or something. We would get a new, you know, new pairing of host and puppeteer. Uh, but for some reason, there was a long period where he and I did not rotate and we were just with each other for like months and months and months and months. I think there was like transitions and schedules and things going on out behind the scenes that we weren't, they didn't know. Mm. Um, so Sean and I worked together a lot and really got to like um, know each other very well and, and kind of get to know each other's rhythms very well to the point where when we finally did stop working with each other, you know, we got rotated out to somebody else. I, I think I started working with Kelly again. Um, I, I, I was confused. I was like, I, like, I forgot. I was like, I was so used to Sean's rhythm of how he did things that I, I, I had gotten out of practice and I, I was like forgetting to, to, talk to Kelly because I just forgot when she was going to leave space for me and things like that. <laughs> yeah. And then the, the other hosts like Tim and uh, yeah, Emily, Emily and they, Kaylin, Kaylin Becker. Yeah. I didn't really work with them that much. They were kind of coming in as I went out. So um, I worked with them some, but um, not too much. They were sort of the new, the new brand of, of sunny side up. Right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, that so I, I don't have my, I don't have too much to too much to them but although I love seeing K uh, Caitlin is now Mika on yes show. yes yes oh my so gosh happy for her I have a five year old and so we watch so we watched the show and I was like whoa um, and also we watch Weird but True so I get to get to see Carly um, show up on our TV sometimes too and I'm like this is crazy I know all these people yeah yeah. I get to be I get to be a superstar with my kids I get to like call up the people who are on the TV and they can like. <laughs> they can like talk to Carly, you know, <laughs> like, <laughs> like oh, I, I know Carly, you want to talk to her? Sure. We'll talk to her. We, um, yeah, we talked to each other. It was like back during the pandemic, uh, more like when we were all talking to each other <laughs> like this <laughs> all the time. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, I guess that's uh. my story of, of talking, of working with the host in, in, in the grandest of sense. <laughs> nice. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. So now, um, uh, I'm kind of curious. Um, you know, there might be a lot of them, but do you have any like favorite Sunny Side Up show segments or songs? Um. Oh, there's oh okay okay. Uh, yes, there are so many. Um, uh, what what can I say? What can I say? Okay, all right. There okay. There's like maybe two or three I could talk about. First all of right. all. We did one segment. It was a recorded segment with my aunt Diane, and she's a uh -oh. bus driver. And so we, uh, I wrote this segment about uh, Chica getting on a bus, and and my aunt, she she's up in North Jersey, but she, um, I called her. I was like, "Can do you think you could come down here to Philly with your bus, and so we could shoot a thing about being getting on a bus?" And she's like, "Sure." So her like her company let her do it, and she came down here. And we spent a whole day shooting this thing where Chica and Kelly get to go on a bus. I have a pic, maybe I have a picture of it. Hold on. I have this little album here. Okay. Well, here's a little picture. All right. That's me uh, and Kelly. Wow. And Kelly. Wow. Oh, that's awesome. Away. That's really cool. So it was a recorded. I, I remember that one. Um, I think you can find it. I think you, it's up online somewhere. Um, yeah. Uh, so that was really fun. It was really fun to involve my aunt. My aunt was always like a big supporter of me at, and like my artistic endeavors when I was a kid. She's also kind of an, ar an artist as well. And so hmm. uh, it was really fun to get to incorporate her into that. And she did a great job. And um, yeah, it was so fun. She was so patient. And you know, she never, I don't think she'd ever been on a, a set before. So I was like, it's going to be a lot of waiting around, waiting for things to happen. Um, and, but she was great with it. And it was a lot of fun. So that's one, that's one favorite, <laughs> one favorite thing I did um is there another the, the oh the other thing was gosh okay so you know we got to have like elmo come on the show yeah yeah oh, yes. kevin clash love kevin yes you, did you guys have you talked to kevin did you talk to kevin yeah yes you guys have talked to everybody i don't know how you do pretty it pretty much <laughs> um i feel honored to be a part of such a a, a great collection of people um, oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah. It means a lot. Thank you. 
so uh i got i think this was maybe the first time he came to be on our show and i i got paired up we i was working with him i forget anyway um i got i got to write the script for him and we got on a, we were on a conference call and i remember t- t- describing the script to him and he liked it and i was like oh, elmo likes my script i'm so excited <laughs> And uh, and then we did it, and then I got to perform with him, and I and uh, and it was just a super cool thing that I got to like write this thing for Elmo, and Elmo performed it, and and it was great. It was this little thing about uh, singing Jingle Bells, and when he, when we get to the part where he's laughing all the way, ha ha ha, he like Elmo because he's known for his laugh, um, mm-hmm. like couldn't stop laughing at that point. And messed up the take, and so we had to go back and sing it again. And she, and then like the second time, he and Chica start to kind of lose it together. And then the first <laughs> time through, he and Chica and Liz, we all lose it. And it's like it's a great little segment. It was so much fun. Oh yeah, oh, oh, oh it's great. Um, was it the um? Was it like another song that like that you or someone wrote that that Elmo and Chica did together? Uh, Liz was there too, called um, Kwanzaa Candles. Oh yes, uh, yes, there was seven Kwanzaa candles. There was a song. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's right. Um, that's true. Yes, that was also part of it. I can't remember. I can't remember if that was that time because he came down twice. Mm-hmm. Both times were like holiday times, right? Um, and I can't remember if it was the first or second time that he had come down that we did that. Song. Yeah, because it's, it was also Liz was there for that too. Yeah. So okay, so it must have been the first time then, because mm-hmm. I think it was. Done. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Seven Kwanzaa Candles. Oh my goodness. I, I'm just barely remembering the song as you mentioned it right now. Uh, <laughs> wow. Yeah, 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 yeah. This whole thing, when you emailed, I was like, I, I stayed up all night because I just, I was like, God, I haven't thought about these, these things in a long time. Um, but it was good. It was like a good staying up all night. Like going like, oh, I remember that. Oh, and that too. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, thank you for jogging my memory. While we You're welcome. My own You're very welcome. <laughs> You're very welcome. <laughs> um, yeah. So I, like, I mean, that was just such a thrill uh, to get to work with Kevin and and Elmo. I mean, like, that's like, you know, for the thing that we were doing, that's the top of the the heap. You know, like that's like, yeah. You know? <laughs> so it was kind of amazing to to get to do that. Um, I was so starstruck. I I, I get. I, Kevin, Kevin, at some point handed me the Elmo puppet because he wanted me to take some it was a costume piece off to get changed for the next thing, and I, I just, I just held the puppet and I just looked at it and I like I couldn't. And then he finished doing whatever he needed to do and he he looked up at me and he was like, "Give me that back," because I didn't do the thing he asked me to do. <laughs> I didn't take off the the costume. <laughs> it was just a dump truck that I was like looking at the looking at the Elmo. <laughs> so I, it was it was like I felt like an idiot, but I was also like, um, I couldn't help myself. Just like so 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 surreal um, that it was happening. Uh, yeah, and of course, there's like the recur like the ongoing segments too, like dress cheek. Uh... Mm-hmm, and of mm-hmm. course like the birthday segments were always fun oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, we did so many birthdays so many dress chicas the dress chica thing that like like came and went and like there was like a clamshell thing that opened up at some point like, yeah yeah the show kept mm-hmm. evolving yeah over time, where yeah. dress got more elaborate and then there was like a like there was a drawing things i don't know there were so many segments it was <laughs> <laughs> mm. and that that elmo story is a perfect segue to my next question uh, who, who were some of the other favorite guest stars you got to work with oh man um well we also had carol spinney yes. oh yeah and I got to work with him. At... Oh yes, we talked a lot about that too, Kevin and Boris. Oh, such a wonderful man, with Forrest especially. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, you talked to Forrest too? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Is that is that up already? I haven't seen that one. No, it's not up yet. Not yet. No, not yet. no, no. Not yet. The one, will be the one soon. With Kevin hasn't even up yet. But Bill will be. Okay. Kevin hasn't gone yet, yeah. but both of them will be soon. Oh my goodness. Oh, all right. All right. Cool. 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 I thought maybe I was your first cheeky tear that you talked to, but apparently I'm not. 
Okay. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. So he came, he came down a few times. One time he came down, I wasn't there for, it, it was like before I was got there. Um, and I think that, would, but then he came down again to be Oscar um, with, yep. with Billy Jenkins. She came down as a second puppeteer and like puppet wrangler. Who, like, I think she now works on Sesame kind of full time. Yeah, and, and Don Quixote. Don Quixote. Yes, yes. yes yeah. Love that show. Um, um, I have a picture of them too. Uh, well, I could I could spend all day so showing you pictures, but um, uh, so when he came, go right yeah. ahead, go right ahead. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. So when when he came down, um, we went to dinner like the night before uh you know sprout kind of took him and his wife and, and a bunch of us out to dinner together yeah and, i think uh, forrest talked about that too i think so yeah i mean just lovely we like they you know yeah. the puppeteers got to set closest to him so we could like have all the stories with him um here's a, here's a picture of well here's a picture of oh yeah and, oh, and, oh wow oh that's, that's great. great yeah Yes, wow. yeah, yeah. I remember that picture for us show us too. Yes. Yeah. Oh, is that really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the, the, yeah. Oh man. Um, so we went out to this dinner the night before. And we're chatting, we're chatting, we're chatting. And then I had to go. I forget why I had to leave early. I don't remember. Maybe it was because when I, I had to put a kid to bed or something. I don't I don't know what it was. Or maybe because I had to get up early the next morning to start the show. Um and as I was leaving. I get up, I'm gone, I say my goodbyes. And then uh, Carol Spinney turns around and says, goodbye, Brendan, in the voice of Big Bird. Oh and my gosh. Uh, like my heart stopped. And I went like, oh. because I, you know, I grew up on Sesame Street. It was like the only show I watched when I was a kid. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Big Bird just said my name. Like me, talk to me. And I, I, again, like I just starstruck. And I actually had to like turn back and I went like, Oh, wow! You like that's a superpower. Like I can't believe you just did that. <laughs> uh, it really, it's really amazing. Um, just to just to hear that voice say, "Talk to me," and and it was just this brief little moment, but I I I remember it very very clearly. Um, and it was it was fun. And then he, we did this thing with Denisha. It was about the Oscars. At the time, the Oscars were doing this thing where, like, they would show people's um, pedicures or manicures uh, on a camera. Like, they'd have people like do this in a little camera to show off their manicures. This was the thing that the regular Oscars were doing. So we kind of spoofed that, and we had um, Denisha kind of like walk on to the camera with this little thing. But they were all these like trashy uh, rings and and like like Oscar themed sort of like. Pedic a manicure. Uh, <laughs> and uh when she when she walked on the and, and then Oscar, the character, was doing commentary on it, like talking about how awful they were and how much he loved it because how awful they were. And then when she did this, one of the rings like fell apart. Like it 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 uh <laughs> it fell off and kind of tumbled forward. Oh uh, wow. And I think this was live because all of us sort of went, <gasps> you know. Oh no! But Oscar was like, "Now I love it even more. Like it's even better. It's more trashy. <laughs> like he totally saved the link." And uh, we were all, like, yes. he's like, he's like eighty, and he's still like, you know, improv and better than we are. Yeah. <laughs> like Chica couldn't do anything. You know, like she could, she could just squeak at stuff. Like she wasn't like actually able to do much. Right. Uh, but he was oh, able man. to save it. It was. I was like, oh man, he's he's. That's awesome. That's like so. <laughs> That's wonderful. And, 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 and perfect for, for our show too, because like, you know, the fun of the liveness of it is that it it's live. Like things happen that are. Yeah, yeah. Unusual. Yeah, and for and for Absolutely. speaking speaking of Sesame Street, Forrest, I think also mentioned uh, that there was a time that you all got to visit the Sesame Street set. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. oh we sure did. I, yeah. I I got to meet um, oh Eric Jacobson. Oh, cool. Oh, I love nice. Eric. Oh, he's great. Very, very briefly. Yeah, I don't know if he'll, he, he probably doesn't even remember meeting me. It was just like so brief, but um, it was, uh, he was, he seemed very kind, but I didn't know what to say. Because um, again, it's just like, it's overwhelming to go visit the set and see everything and all the, the people and, you know, like, 
flood of childhood. Movies. I uh, love Eric. I have, yeah, yeah, lovely, lovely gentleman. Oh yeah, and Leslie Craig Rudolph. Oh yeah, we got to work. I didn't get to work with her that much. Um, just the way the rotation worked out, as somebody else worked with her, but um, I got to sort of meet her and you know take pictures with her and stuff. Yeah, uh, yeah, pictures uh, of you and Kevin uh, and you know some others. Yeah, I took a picture with, with Leslie and and Nabi too. Yeah, uh, yeah. Oh, yep, yep. And, and there was a time, and there was a time like we find that we mentioned a bit of Oscar beyond on uh, science set up, but there was a time that you know Forrest actually kind of like helping Carol with. Doing the white hands, yes, right for Oscar. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, that yeah, was pretty cool. Yes. There's a great picture of him. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, right handing Oscar. Like, what a thrill! Oh man, yeah. I think that was that. I think that was the time when he came that before I was there. But because I, I remember seeing that picture when I when I got there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> mm. yeah uh, how cool that? Did he show you the picture of him, like with his Oscar? Yeah. Like, yeah, that's a wonderful with picture. Carol, yeah, really, I is. love that picture so much. It's so cute. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So, aside from a uh, sunny setup show, of course, as we talked about earlier, you got to puppeteer Courtesy Owl for the Sprout Sharing Show. Um, now, what, what what was what was that kind of experience like? I know you kind of talked a little bit about it earlier, but what was what was that like for you? That was a bunch of fun um it was my first time doing on camera puppeteering Mm -hmm. um so you know kudos to the people who hired me for like thinking that i could do that um i guess i mean i guess really my first first time doing it was maybe the audition for the show but uh but that was like you know now i have to do it for real so it was it was a definitely a big learning curve um learning the monitor thing you know that was like a huge part of it um but that but i got to learn it really really quickly because the show was like we filmed a lot of stuff really fast so i just had to like get in there and learn it by like kind of baptism by fire um uh but also like i think because those puppets were so simple in a way you know like there, there really wasn't there wasn't a lot to, that you could do with them like it was a good introduction to monitor work because I didn't have to worry about mechanisms or rods or, you know, I, I mean, occasionally a rod kind of thing, like his base was on a rod, but, um, but I could really just kind of focus on making sure I'm going in the right direction and I'm looking where I need to look and things like that. And, um, and it really was, I mean, I don't know, there was just like a great energy around that, around that whole experience around the whole show. I just felt like everybody was really excited about it. Um, it was really silly. It was really, really silly. And I think they kind of let us be really silly. Um, and I, I, that's where I thrive. I think I really thrive when I get to be a puppet improviser. I think those two things are like, like doing like scripted stuff or like really well rehearsed stuff. I don't know if I'm all that, all that good at that, but I think I'm really good at kind of playing around with it. (laughs) Um, Oh yeah. And, but yeah, it was a, it was a great. It was, I, I, that was like a great, you know, learning experience of, of learning how to do this thing and like doing puppetry on camera. Um, and everybody was, I mean, everybody was so, like, so helpful. Kelly was so helpful. Uh, Kevin. Kevin was so helpful. Ricky. Um, uh, Ali. Uh, Jonathan Judge. Um, yeah, like, yeah. Kelly got to mention, but Jonathan Judge, funny enough, <laughs> that yeah, he directed yeah. like he directed so much. It. Yeah, he's like him. Yeah, I mean, he's huge. Um, and the the puppets were made by the Kyoto brothers, which is like crazy. I, I don't know if you know those guys, but they like make mm. they're out in L.A. Oh, yeah. big old stuff. Um, and I don't know why. I don't know why they ha- they hired this like pretty well, it's, it's pretty uh, awesome company to make these very uh, kind of rudimentary puppets. But, you know, we're like, wow, these cool. They're made by the Kyoto brothers. Um, uh, yeah it was great it was, uh, what can i say about it like i think i think i'm so glad that that was my introduction to sprout like my way in because it was so much fun um you know like there was you know with the with the the sunny side up show there was a lot more um uh, uh responsibility i was you know being being the associate producer as well as the puppeteer that was like 
I had to learn how to do that job as well. And then, um, you know, like, and it was a sort of like constant thing where you had to do it every day. Uh, and so, it's all alive too. Yeah. And so there was, um, and, and I, I did that for like five years or so. So uh, after, after, you know, it's, it, I don't know, like the, 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 the spark of, of fun is there and then it goes away. Like it's not constant when you're doing something for like that long a time. Um, but I feel like, uh, I feel like the sharing show was just pure joy for two weeks of filming, you know, like it was just, <laughs> um, yeah, it was, it was great. It was great. It was great. I would love to do that show again. I wish we did more of that show. We, I think oh. we all wanted to do more sharing show. But they never, they never needed any more than what they had. So, mm. okay. I yeah. think Kelly got to do a few more things. I think they like refreshed it sometimes with like little Kel like little Patty things. Oh. So she got to do a little bit more over the years, but um, the rest of us didn't do as much. Mm. Meh, meh. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean, this pause Sherry show. I remember watching that vlog too, because I mean. I mean, I, I remember lots of shows that, like that sometimes like air like around that block, mm -hmm. which you know, which I remember a lot. Like, and <laughs> okay, now do you remember the songs that like well, well, technically two. I mean, one version and one just a normal version. Do you remember where <laughs> there's a point where every single episode, I think, where Chris <laughs> like sing the um the can't share blues song. <laughs> Oh man, I remember. I sort of remember it now that. And then the one time he did, like for Valentine's Day, like Chris Valentine Blues. Oh yeah, and I'm pretty sure I played the harmonica on that because I play harmonica, and I think there was a little harmonica solo in there that I did, mm. if I'm not mistaken. If I, um, <laughs> I I bear I sort of remember it. Like this is a, this is going back to what 2008. When we did that so mm. it's been a little while um, yeah <laughs> uh i don't know i don't think there's a lot of clips of that show uh that exist in the world so it's hard i mean it, yeah. it is on youtube but um, not as much compared yeah. to sunny stop show sunny yeah. stop show that's on youtube but yeah and there's actually a time like, since you kind of mentioned with uh, denisha earlier mm -hmm. there there's actually a time that the Sparrow Sharing Show gang actually actually got to visit um the Sunshine Barn for oh, Tanisha's yeah. baby shower. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. We did that. We we would they would come on every once in a while for stuff. It was it was fun. Yeah, we would um yeah, oh gosh, for baby shower. God man, so many things. <laughs> <laughs> so many things happened to people while we were it was like she had a baby. Yeah. <laughs> that's crazy. Yes. That's the whole thing. Here, um, I remember, I think it was, um, so her, her husband, Chris, um, did, did many things, but one of the things he did was, a, well, he was a house painter. And huh. when I think, whoa, okay, this is really fuzzy memory. I think it was maybe when we were gonna have our first kid, me and my wife were gonna have our first kid. Um, before the kid came, we were trying to get a bunch of stuff done, and one of the things was uh, this new a new paint job. And so, uh, Denisha's husband came and painted our house. And so, with the paint job that is on my house right now is still Chris Pratt's. <laughs> wow! And uh, I still remember. I still can like look at the look at these. Like there was like a piece of of um, molding missing, and he kind of he painted he painted it in like as if it was there. <laughs> and I was like, oh, that's clever. Nice job. <laughs> oh, that's great. No, that's that's wonderful. So now, um, I know you kind of did a bit a bit of him earlier, but um, I'm sure a lot of Sparrow fans um um want to. Uh, it's fine if we can hear a little bit of Curtis. Oh yeah. Um. Well, um, Curtis kind of kind of sounds like this. Um, and it's like maybe a little bit stuffed up or something. Um. It's been a long time since I got to do Curtis. Maybe he was a little bit lower. It depended on the day and how tired my voice was. Uh, it depends. I always loved. I always loved calling. Hey, Miss Patty's mom. And that's <laughs> how I called. I called her Miss Patty's mom. Hey, Miss Patty's mom. Miss Patty's mom. Um, 
uh, Ricky. Um, oh, I feel like um, Curtis often like fell. <laughs> so he goes, oh, oh, I'm okay. I'm all right. I'm okay. <laughs> and then I do the usual, like, like, thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> like, like every song, like kind of like, like a little Elvis. Uh, uh, yeah, 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 it's true. Yeah. Yeah, I always, I always like to add. If you forget to watch them, I always, I always tried to like add a little something at the end of a line where, I, yeah, because we'd always like have a little crowd. Everybody would be like, yeah, yeah, and I'd be like, yes, I enjoyed that very much, or something. Like, I just <laughs> add a little strange line in there. I remember one time, um, I think it was like a kite was going, or was like carrying him away or something. Yeah, so he was trying to yeah, catch him. That, and he, he was like. I got it. I got it. I got it. And then at some point, the thing got away from him, and he was like, "I do not got it. I do not have it anymore. I do not have it." <laughs> and, <laughs> and, I, and I made that choice because, like, I I want to say I want to do, I got it, and I don't got it. But don't got it is like, not totally great English, you know, like proper grammar maybe. Um, so I was like, well, I'm gonna say it and then transition into I do not have it. So it's like I clearly <laughs> so I don't I don't <laughs> try to try to like do a little bit of education uh, while I was doing the line. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, know. I don't know. I don't for whatever reason I remember that little part of it. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. So um uh, you also got to work on Sprout's holiday special, preschool musical on a stick. What was it like doing that? That was so silly. Um, I think that was such a great idea. Uh, like a great way to integrate the Sprout style of things with with the real world. Like it was something for the, the parents could understand that it was about it was sort of a parody of High School Musical. Um, and then the fact that it's all just on Popsicle sticks is like, as if as if the sharing show characters couldn't get any simpler you know like they're so simple already and then they're like well what if we make everybody just completely flat and put them on a stick and then i was like how like i think it's kind of amazing that um uh that that like like that somebody we they dedicated the resources to making a popsicle stick puppet show you know it's kind of amazing that you would do something so simple uh at, at that scale you know and kind of scale it up for like professional tv version of it but still pretty cool um i think we did it twice i believe we did too i think we did yeah that's right preschool musical on a stick and then preschool musical on a stick too um and i believe the wiggles were involved maybe in both or maybe just the yeah. second one yeah um yeah yeah that was fun it was always, it was always a lot of fun to like do kind of crossover with other people other things like get other um performers involved and stuff so mm. uh, that was yeah with those things that was really fun because when we do big stuff like that we needed like a lot of hands so yeah like, lots of people in the building would come down and be like we need we need um uh, you know somebody from marketing would come down and somebody from uh you know like all different sections of whoever they're like whoever wants to come and hold a stick on, on the screen can come and hold the stick so it was a lot of fun to get other people involved who weren't normally in the show. Um, I remember Ali had to like, I think Ali directed that too. Uh, she had to direct everybody to like dance together, you know? So she would just, oh, yeah. be she just shouted us like which side of the room to, to dance towards. And she'd, she'd be like, the light side, the door side, light side, door side, you know, because just so everybody knew which way to go. Cause you can't say left and right because the screen's flipped and nobody, you know, you're not sure which way to, so everybody could just understand. Oh, we go towards the door. We go towards the light. We go towards the door. That was, <laughs> that's what I remember from from that show. That was cool. <laughs> I have I have all these like things. I when when you called, I was like, oh, I have stuff that I could show you, and I don't know what other people have showed you, but I have like I have like little Chica. Little oh, yeah. oh, that's great. And I have bigger stuff, Chica. Oh, you know, that's nice. These used to be available in show in in stores for a little while. Like um, yeah, oh while. yeah. We got to have like all these cute things. I have like this one's got to be super rare. This is like a stuffed banjo that exists. Oh, Allie, Allie, oh, wow. Allie, 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 All
Uh, <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. Which, 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 because because Ali, which which um, to those who don't know, um, Ali is actually a uh, they, um, them. Um, Ali actually got to uh, perform the banjo for the Let's Go show, which I remember yeah. that a lot too. Yes. Right. I'm so sorry. I probably been re referring to her as a she, and I apologize. But that's, that's no, no worries. I knew that. Worries. No worries at all. It, it happens. Um. Yeah. 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 That's true. Was that that's was true. that ever actually sold, or was that just given to like? I don't know. I don't think this was sold. I think this was just given to people who are in the in the company. But wow. I don't, I don't know. Wow. I really don't. This is actually gorgeously made. This is a kind of amazing. Oh yeah. Puppet. Yeah. The puppet too. The banjo puppet. Oh yeah. Is gorgeous. Oh, yes. Heavy. Really heavy. But like incredibly gorgeously made. Um, I don't remember who made that one. I know uh, Victoria Ellis made the Chica puppets. Um, oh, wow. She's a, she's a puppet builder out of, like, she comes from Sesame Henson World. Uh, and I think she's out of New York. I don't know, but she does all the Chica puppets. And, oh, we had a 1,000th episode, and they all gave, they gave us T-shirts for it. They gave us an SSU. Oh, that's cool. Oh, oh, oh that's, goodness. that's great. Wow. Oh, wow. wow. Everybody got that. It, it looks like a that. university, like, how about yeah, yeah, yes, a yeah. sunny side? I, yes. Oh. Yes, yes. SSU. That's what we always called. We yes. always called everything by their initials. It was SSU. Yeah. Uh, I forget what, uh, you know, whatever it was, we, you know, G G GNS, Good Night Show. Like everything had to have their own little initials. Oh, um, they also gave us these things. We have like this cute little like sprout mug. There's also a planter. Wow. Uh, and Love that. they gave us a, we have a cereal bowl for I think five years. Yeah, celebrating five sunny years. Wow. So that was like 20, yeah, 2012. Yeah, or something like that, yeah. 12, yeah. Like that. I forget I forget when they say the show started. I wasn't there. Yeah, 2007. Oh, yeah. Seven, I think seven. it was. Because that's when it was started. In the, in the, before, because before the Science Lab, it was actually um, the, the birthday show where Kevin right. got to yeah. host yeah. it. And then it was. So Kevin was kind cool. of like the first out of any of them. Yeah, he was all. Really? Oh, yeah. And I think he, sh I think he wasn't even in Philly. I think they shot that thing like out in L.A. or something, remotely. Mm. Um, it was my that's my memory of it, but I, I don't know. That was that was kind of before my time. Right. Um, what else? Uh, I want to show you. Oh, this, this, like nobody, nobody has this. I don't think. Maybe Kelly has it. Um, this is a DVD that came out. This is a Sprout DVD. I think I have that one. No way! You have it? I think I do. I think That's I do. Cool. I haven't. I haven't. I haven't seen it in years. But I, I think. I yeah, think I have it. I remember. The, on, I remember Sprout. I think, Sprout. I think I have it. Sprout put out a couple DVDs. Yeah. Yeah. The one for Knight Show too. Yeah. Oh, cool! Um, I never knew there were other ones. This but they, 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 I think they put out a few of those. I'm not sure where you find them now, but I think Sprout put out a couple of those years ago. We um. That was me and Kelly. Me and Kelly are are on this DVD. We got to work on this together. Nice. Um, it, I'll tell you a funny story about this one. Uh, we did this shot where like Chica needed to be lifted up. She was like in a tutu, and we were lifting her up. And so you were gonna see her legs, and Chica didn't have any legs. So we made legs for her. So that you could, so when she gets picked up, so like it was like a ballerina move. Like she was a ballerina, and Kelly was sort of like lifting her up. Um, if you have the DVD, you can go watch the scene. So we made these legs for her, and then Victoria Ellis, who who made the Chica puppets, saw this and was like upset because she's like, "Those legs don't look good, and this is making my art look bad because that's my puppet." You know, like I built that puppet. So then she built legs for chica so after that we had like professional like well-made chica legs from that point on because victoria ellis saw our janky legs that we made for this thing and was like no no they, they gotta look better than that because I, I they may have been made out of like rolled up construction paper like it was not it was oh, really not a professional but it was like the best we could do <laughs> so what was it like um kind of getting to perform on the Sprout Float in the Macy's Parade. Oh, Macy's Parade. That was cool. That was um that was the first I did the first year. Okay. Um, and it was me. Uh I wasn't supposed to be on the float. 
uh, it was supposed to be John Kennedy. Yes. He was. Oh, I love John. Yeah. He was right. Chica's dad. He's Chica's dad in the Chica show. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then, and then John Barnhart did the, did the mom, right? The yeah. Mom. I love yeah. Jen, too. She's just yeah. the sweetest. Yeah. I've got to, I got to work with her on a different project I could tell you about, but um yeah yeah the Chica show, too. Uh, so so it was supposed to be John, but then John got like called up to be on the Sesame Float because somebody right. on the Sesame Float didn't want to do didn't didn't want to do Cookie Monster or something I forget, um so then they were like so then I got called up like kind of called up from the minor leagues to get to be on the float and that was that was cool um it was me and Forrest and Jen in a box for. A very long time <laughs> um <laughs> with our, and our, and our arms funny. our arms had to be up the whole parade that we, we could huh. not bring our arms down because of the way the set was built um you had to like put the puppet in the top and then put your arm in the puppet and that was it like you couldn't come up and down because they had to make the hole so small that people couldn't see us through the hole because <laughs> people were looking down on the parade so they made the hole really small for the puppets which meant that we just had to keep our arm up there for the whole time, um, which was a, that was a, that was a challenge. That was a real challenge. And when the parade was finally over and we could take our arms down, all of us were like, <gasps> well, "That's great." Um, uh, yeah, that was kind of incredible. But it was just it was just the three of us stuck in that little box, and, and they gave us a monitor so we could see what well, we we would kind of see ourselves. And then we could see our, our feed when we went to do the show at the end of the parade. But of course, as soon as we got there, that's when the monitor went out. So we had no monitor. Yes, it, uh, tell us that too. Yes, yeah. no yeah. monitor. Yeah. Our first performance on that, like, you know, like the parade. Yeah, it's, it's just a whole in front of so many people. So many people had no hopefully it looked good. Who knows? And thankfully it did. Yes. Yeah. I'll turn um, out well in the end. <laughs> I should have cross-referenced my notes with Forrest if I'd known you guys already talked to him, see what he remembers of it. Um, I remember that. I mean, it was such a, it was a thrill because, uh, yeah, you just got to feel like you were part of a cool club. Like all these, like, oh, look at all these other people who are, get to be in the parade too. And I, I, I we like walked down to the Sesame Parade to kind of say hello to them, uh. To, uh, to, to their float because, um, uh, some wonderful. of us knew each other and you know obviously jen knew everybody who was over there um and i'm mm -hmm. pretty sure i photobombed a picture with alan maraca um, oh, oh yeah alan, alan. yes wow. i i That's cool i'm pretty sure like jen was there and lars you know lars she's like a i'm reclaimed yeah yes Lar yeah we worked with her a lot because every time somebody from sesame came down to sprout she would come as the wrangler um, she came and did like a regular workshop for us at one point. Um, uh, so we knew Lars. So I think I'm pretty sure there's a picture of like Jen Barnhart and Lars and Alan and me. Like I, I don't fit in the I don't fit in the picture, but I just was there. I just happened to be there. So I got to get a picture with them, even though uh, what am I doing there? I'm not. <laughs> mm -hmm. But that was that was a that was really fun to like kind of feel like we were in the same club with the sesame people uh, right. like, how neat and then yeah <laughs> what, like, what a thrill That's uh, wonderful. yeah that was just that was just pure fun <laughs> <laughs> absolutely so moving on from your work with sprout now you also performed with the short-lived uh zanny comedia troupe what oh, was man. that what was that like um that was fine <laughs> That was, I don't know. Um, that was a, that was a, um, that was interesting. There was this one older fellow here in Philly who just like put up a, put up a notice at my university that he was looking for people to be part of a comedia troupe. And I was interested in comedia because of, I'd studied a little bit in school. And so it was me and a few other friends who joined this guy. And, and I think it was a, <laughs> God, I can't remember his name. Oh, Glenn, Glenn, ooh, something. I can't remember Glenn's last name. Um, but it was a it was a cool opportunity because he kind of like he kind of financed the thing, so I got to learn how to eat fire and ride a unicycle because he he would bring these people in and do workshops with us, um, and we got to just kind of like learn all these cool interesting things because Glenn was interested in doing these things. Um, 
it didn't last very long and a lot of like the uh the the younger folks sort of like separated off and i actually started my own theater company on my own comedia company um taking a lot of lessons from that of like learning what to do and what not to do i got to do some cool shows i did we did a show at like N in nyu they invited us up to do a show there for the student union or something um and i got to like steal a cell phone from one of the audience members because the cell phone went off and comedia is like it's very improv based and you can you can sort of mess with the the structure of it so it was, i was totally free to um you know, go into the audience and steal the guy's cell phone and tell him I'll, he'll get it back after the show. <laughs> um, but that was fun. Yeah, that was a good time. I think it was a good, it was a good um, uh, first step in my in my journey in Commedia dell'arte. Nice, wonderful. Um, so uh, you also got to co-direct uh, various Commedia shows. Mm -hmm. uh, can you talk a bit about doing that? Sure. Um, yeah, uh, Commedia dell'arte is uh, this this form of theater. It started in Italy about five hundred years ago, and um, it, it's it's very improv based and it's very physical, and and characters wear half masks. So in that way, it's a lot, it's a lot like it's very similar. Mask work and puppetry are very similar because you're both you're both of it's like trying to make an inanimate object alive. Right, whether it's a puppet or whether it's a mask that's like fixed to your face, you're you're trying to kind of live through this inanimate object, um, and then like your whole body is sort of the puppet in that way. But there's a lot of crossover, a lot of like similar techniques are involved in both things, uh, and I just I just fell in love with it, um, studying it in school and then working with the that Zani Commedia troupe, and then I eventually so, oh, I had this job where I got to do, I got to create shows with high school students and tour with them during summers. Um, it was through uh, Windsor Mountain is what it's called now. Windsor Mountain is a summer camp up in, in New England. But they, um, but they had this traveling program. And so I got to do that for a couple summers in Europe and also California and New England. Um, and, I, and we did, a, and, and, and we had success. And that's what was so shocking. It was like, these are high school kids who've never done Commedia, who've never like performed for an audience that doesn't speak English necessarily. And I thought, wow, if they, if, if we can have success doing this with these kids, I would love to see if I can have success doing it here at home. So I started my own theater company called Ombelico Mask Ensemble. Mm. And um, this was sort of happening at the same time as Sprout. We started around 2007. Um, and I have a I had a co-director named John Belomo, and we uh, we worked for about ten years. It's still the company still sort of exists, but we haven't done a lot of work recently. Um, but uh, it's been great. We did a lot of shows here in Philly in the Fringe Festival. We got to tour to other Fringe festivals around the East Coast, and then also we got we had some collaborators from Italy. So we've we've done a few shows in Italy, um, and there's even a chance I might get to go back this summer. To go to remount one of our shows oh, there, nice. one of the shows I directed. Uh, I got to go in awesome. 2022, like two summers ago. We remounted one of our shows there, um, and I got to go and, and direct it in in Rome. And maybe I'll get to do it again. It depends if the funding comes through. We'll see. <laughs> nice. um, but yeah, that's a it's that's a big part of my life, and it's it's sort of. It's sort of I haven't had a chance to do it very recently, I, mostly because I've of having a second child. I think I, I like ran out of extra time, um, but I I do uh, I hope to get back to it at some point um, very soon. Uh, I also also I love one of the things I do is I make I sometimes make puppets and I make masks and I make masks for my theater company uh, out of leather, which is the original sort of traditional way of making the masks for Commedia dell'arte. Hmm. Nice. Very nice. Very nice. So currently you direct and perform for Umbelico Mask Ensemble, which you also founded. Could you yes. describe kind of what that is and how that came to be? Oh, you just missed it. That's what we were just talking about. Oh, <laughs> no, I was, I was, I was trying to find my uh, DVD. I, I know I still have it. I, I just couldn't find it. I know it's around here somewhere. I got the one on Big Bird. 
Joey, no. <laughs> it's one of people. That's 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 good for you. That's good for you, but that's not. No, I I know I still have it, but. Scooter's going wild. Hmm. I mean, I had to do some digging to find mine. So yeah. I'll right. Yeah, I, I'll probably. I don't do have any sprout too. stuff. I gotta. I gotta fix that. <laughs> One thing I'll, I'll tell you one thing um, I did work on fairly recently was a show called Albie's Elevator. Uh, oh, cool. It's, it's a new puppet, kids puppet show that's on, is produced by the, um, the uh, PBS station here in Philly. So I don't know if you guys get it or not, but check it out. It's, called, Al it. it's called Albie's Elevator. And nice. Um, the Monkey Boys productions was kind of involved. Yeah. In oh yeah, Mark, Mark yeah. and Michael. Yeah, I love those guys. Oh yeah, it's great. They guys built too. they built the puppets and and did some performing on it. And then I just did a few little things. I wasn't there for very long. Um, it was mostly other people, but uh, I did get a chance to check it out, and it's it's pretty cool. It's a neat little new show, and there aren't many um new uh puppet shows in the world so it's nice to like yeah. know that there's another one out there yeah yeah there's julius green room helpsters don quixote helpsters, like I don Quixote. of course sesame street still going on yeah and there's other than that there's not as much yeah definitely shows. definitely not Nowadays. as much as when i because when it, when we were kids i mean there was like bear in the big blue house and between the, the lions, lions and you know. oh, Between the Lions is so good. That is such a good show. Oh, love that yeah. show. Love that show too. I was I was too old for it, but I when I saw it, I was like, oh, this is really well done. And they yeah. I don't know why they're not still made. I told I told Jen Barnhart that when I first met her. I was like, this show is amazing. I don't know why this there isn't more of this show. It's like yeah. perfect. It's so well done. Yeah. Well yeah, they've been doing they've time. been they've been doing some new things with the characters lately. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, well, like some of the character, like some of the yeah, Jake actually went to an event where um Cleo and Theo, the mom and dad lines from the show, are actually uh they're doing a song from the show and meeting uh, fans cool. and everything. Oh, that's very cool. Yeah, yeah, I can. Uh, yeah, there, it, it, yeah, there it is. Yeah, there is a. Okay, I can just uh, make up, uh, everyone post production. You can put put the picture too. Um, but yeah, here's me with uh with Peter. Pierre Lenz and Jen Barnhart. My fan arts I actually made for, for oh, both of them, and they loved it. That's so cool. And um, and, and Chris Surf. Chris Surf, I love that. Yeah, who was a creator? Chris. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah he was a creator, and he has a bad because he was like one of the lead uh songwriters for Sesame Street. Like he wrote. Yeah, and, and little Chrissy. Oh, okay. Yeah. Chrissy character and you know yeah. lots of lots of classic sesame songs and i got nice. took a picture with uh, both um cleo and theo yeah, i was just about nice. to pull that up yes. <laughs> they look huge yeah, i know yeah. oh, oh my huge. gosh they are so huge compared to seeing on on screen but like actually in oh person, yeah of course yeah, yeah. wow yeah. <laughs> I, don't th I don't think i've ever seen them in person Oh, that's uh, cool. and yeah, crazy. That, that's crazy i can see myself like like cleo and theo like actually the very first TV stop Muppet style puppets. I actually see myself in person. That's crazy. I can say that myself. I know. Those are the, those mm -hmm. are the very first. I know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So <laughs> as we're as we're getting to the last couple of questions here, you also got to direct for a Philadelphia Children's Theater. Oh, what was that like? Oh. Oh yeah, that was that was cool. Um, that was another kind of short-lived adventure. Um. They were really fun because they kind of let me do whatever I wanted. So they were, um, they they wanted to do a they I think they brought me on because they wanted to do a Commedia version, a Commedia dell'arte version of Pinocchio, and they had a script for it. And I read the script and I was like, eh, I don't know about this script. This is, I'm I'm not feeling it. But could I make my own show? And they're like, sure, okay, we'll just like. <laughs> so they let me they let me like create our own version of that show. Uh, and that show actually was a, was a comedia show, but we also had a lot of puppetry in it as well, because um, I brought on some of my friends from from around town who were great puppeteers and great performers, and so we got to create this cool mashup of comedia and puppetry and uh, Pinocchio. And and I I had uh, it was 
I remember I, I talked to another uh, mask builder in town about how do we make a Pinocchio mask where the nose could grow? I was like, how, how are we going to make that happen? Because that's like a big part of telling the story of Pinocchio. So we ended up making this regular mask where you could put on, you could add noses onto it. So with a little bit of like magic misdirection, you could like have a nose and then quickly switch and then have a larger nose on the, on the mask that you already had, which I think was kind of cool. Like, I don't know if I've ever come across that again, Somebody somebody's mask that has like a transforming nose. So that was kind of fun. Um, nice. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know where you're finding all this stuff, but you're finding some like small, tiny details of my resume. But it's, it's <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah, well done. <laughs> thank you. Um, since we're about to very close wrapping up very soon, um, aside from where you're, like, you know, where you just mentioned, um, can you share any other projects you're currently working on? Oh gosh, um. I'm not, I don't think there's anything, anything, any big thing that I'm working on these days. Um, uh, I work, I occasionally work with this company called Healthy Humor. Okay. I don't know if you ever heard of the Big Apple Circus. It was a circus in New York. Uh, and then they had something called uh, the Big Apple Circus Clown Care Unit. It's been going on for 30 years. It's clowns from the, from the circus originally. Uh, would go to hospitals and visit kids and do performances for kids. Oh, and that's then, nice. Um, at some point, that clown care, the, the circus kind of had financial difficulties, but the people who were doing the clown care unit were like, we will soldier on. So um, now uh, Healthy Humor is one of the companies that grew out of that tradition. And they have, and they have teams all over the country in all different hospitals, all uh, children's hospitals around the country. And... Uh, I've been working with them for several years here in Philadelphia at the um, Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. And uh, so occasionally I get to be a, a clown with, with another clown partner. We always go in pairs and you get to just, just be silly. Just go to just go around the hospital and go to different rooms and, and put smiles on people's faces and uh. do a lot of um, a kind of a lot of the stuff that we would, you know, kind of what we tried to do with sprout just live in your room for you um and it's a lot of fun i i do some sometimes people do puppetry as well in this job like it's it's kind of a job where you can bring whatever talents you have so if people are magicians they can do that if they're great singers or great musicians they can bring that um and if they're puppeteers they can bring that as well so uh sometimes that's part of what we do as well in the in the hospital um is there anything That's else great. i mean I, I said i might be going like i said i might be going to italy this summer to uh remount one of the umbilico mask ensemble shows oh. uh, mm. um and that's about it I've, I've i've recently my my big project these days is actually learning a new language i'm i'm learning the italian language because i want to for many reasons but uh one of them is because i like collaborating with my friends who are over there and I want to be able to speak their language and direct people in Italy. Nice. Uh, nice. Well, looking forward to those. Yeah. 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 So to, to wrap this up here, so this podcast is called Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show. Uh, when you think of nostalgia, what do you think of? Or in your own words, how do you define the word nostalgia? Ooh. I don't know if I've ever had to define it before. Um, well, there you go. Then it, it, well, that's well, that's the very first for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's true. Um, I mean, there's a sweetness to it, right? It feels like. Oh yeah. Uh, I think it's I think it's one of those one of those things that will make me cry. You know, there are like there are certain things that make you cry and certain things that don't. And like, nostalgia is one of those things. It's sort of a uh, a longing for something from the past. Um, that you know, like you can't quite get back, but there's there's like a sweetness in, about it. Like even though you're sad, like you're you're kind of sad because you because you have such affection for that thing, whatever that whatever that thing that is you're having nostalgia for. Um, so it's I think that's what it is to me anyway. Um, like I said, like this 
when you asked me to do this, it sort of made me go back and remember all of these things that we got to do. And, um, and that was, yeah, it was a piece of nostalgia for me because it's now, it's been quite a while now. Um, and, I, and I think what's lovely about it is that, you know, what, 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 you, what I carry with me is so much of the, the, the positive. It wasn't all positive, but, um, but, but getting to talk about it, like those are the things that I get to talk about. And, and then like, that's, that's a great feeling. So maybe that's nostalgia too, is like getting to just like carry along the good stuff from the mm. past. Nice, nice. Great word send on. So Brennan, thank you so much for taking the time to do this. This was a blast. Oh, yeah, thank you. Thank yes. you. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Like I said, it's an honor, really. Being... It means a lot. Thank you very much. And I, um, and thank you so much of what you've done, of course, bro, over, over the years, where you're part, where you're done, be, be a part of our lives and uh, and keep up the great work of what you're doing now. And I cannot wait what's next in store. Cool. Thank yeah. you. Thank yes. And one more uh, thing I quickly forgot to mention. So we, uh, we have a friend who's a big uh, Sprout fan. His name is a uh, Jason and I was wondering if uh, Curtis could give him a quick little hello. Oh. Mm. Uh, how old is Jason? Or... Uh, I think. Let me check. Cause... Hold on. That's okay. No, no, no. It's all right. I'm, you can. You can. Oh, okay. He, he's um. He, uh, one, five, six, seven. Eighteen. Eight, eighteen. Yeah. Eighteen. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, cool. All right. Um, well, uh, hey there, Jason. Uh, this here is uh, Courtesy Owl. Uh, I don't know if you remember, but um, uh, I used to be on a little show. It's called The Sprout Sharing Show. I played bass. Uh, I like to play bass. That's what I used to do. What do you do? Do you play an instrument? Tell me about it. Uh, get in touch with me at uh, Curtis at... Um, gmail.com. I'm sure I, I probably have a Gmail account somewhere. I'll check it out. Uh, how's that? <laughs> That's, great. That's great. Thank you. That's great. Thank well, much. enjoy the rest of your day, Brendan. I'll uh, I'll email you about uh Sean. We can figure out like how like the best way to take it from there. Sure, sure. No yes. All right. Well, yes. Enjoy the rest of your day, Brendan. Keep in touch. I'll let you know when this goes up. Oh, thank you, and and good luck to you guys too. It seems like you're thank you, Brandon. Awesome thank work you. out there. Yes, absolutely. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right. See you soon, Brendan. Okay, Brendan. Bye. Bye. It's goodbye from us as well. We absolutely enjoyed our time speaking with Brendan Gowell. Um, links to his website, and, or if he has social media, links to that will be in the description down below for people to connect with him and check out his work. But it's goodbye from Brendan, and it's goodbye from us as well. Keep on the lookout for more wonderful interviews coming your way. And as always, what do we say, Jake? Keep nostalgia alive. Take care, everyone. See you next time. Take care. Bye. 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 Thank you for tuning in to another wonderful Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show episode. Be sure to follow Jake and the Happy Nostalgia team on social media, check out our website, and stream the show wherever you find your favorite podcasts. And as always, remember to keep nostalgia alive. Bye-bye.